He was a cardinal and a convict, despised and loved by millions. Today, it's the final judgment for George Pell. I knew he was sick. I, I knew he was dying. Cardinal George Pell, just a few days ago, talking about the death of his friend, Pope Benedict XVI. I was very sad. As a matter of fact, I was surprised uh, how sad I was. At 81, Cardinal Pell looked sprightly, sharp and spirited. It was uh, sad uh, to see another st wonderful stage in church history ending. This morning, the Vatican announced the Cardinal himself had died, reportedly from heart complications after a hip operation in Rome. The Cardinal for me was uh, quite a good mentor, you know, a really important mentor, uh, a kind of a father figure for me. If Catholicism, which is what he followed, is correct and there's a heaven and a hell, well, he's certainly burning in hell right now. Pell was the most senior Australian to ever serve the Catholic Church and the most senior church figure in the world convicted of sex crimes. The cleric was convicted of the sexual assault of two Melbourne choir boys in the 90s. I'm innocent of these charges. They are false. Cardinal Pell, it's been suggested, it's been suggested that priests who sexually abuse children should get down on their bended knees, get down on their bended knees and ask for forgiveness. The son of a Ballarat publican spent more than a year behind bars before a High Court appeal set him free. A full bench of seven judges ruling unanimously in Pell's favour. Terrible crimes have been committed in the church's name. Uh, I think it's a bit ironic uh, that I'm um, the figurehead, the, the scapegoat. Speaking after his release, George Pell continued to maintain his innocence. Got no anger, no hostility towards my complainant. I never had some reason. I feel a bit sorry for him. I'm glad he's passed on. It's a bit of a shame he's taken the secrets to the grave. He had plenty of opportunities during his lifetime to, to try and redeem himself. Phil Nagel was nine years old when he was assaulted by a priest. He was a liar and a protector of, of, of pedophile clergy. Ray Newton revealed Cardinal Pell covered up his sexual abuse at the hands of another priest. Cardinal Pell, shame, shame, absolute shame. The father of one of the choir boys who claimed he was assaulted by Pell was suing the Cardinal. I felt really numb uh, because it's, it, it's, it's a tragedy of great proportions. There are so many survivors in Victoria still who have not been able to come forward about alleged abuse by him on them. Helen Last is a victim's advocate. I personally believe on the basis of evidence that George Pell has been involved in a network of sexual offending clergy that goes right back. He was a terrible, terrible human being that just damaged so many child sex abuse victims, including me, you know, there's so many of my fellow sufferers, you know, it's just, it's, he got off so lightly. I hope he really gets justice. If there is a God, dear God, may he be, you know, forthright in his punishment. Sex abuse victim Michael Advocate shed tears today. They weren't tears for George Pell. He hurt so many people. I mean, you know, he, he, he damaged so many good and innocent people. It's just truly heartbreaking. And, um, you know, I, I just, you know, I hope he burns in hell for all the terrible, terrible things he's done. Pell's evidence before the Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse angered many. It's a sad story and it wasn't of much interest to me. Richard Carlton from 60 Minutes took the Cardinal to task over his support of notorious pedophile priest Gerald Ridsdale. Did David Ridsdale tell you that his uncle, Gerald, Father Gerald, 
had been abusing him? Never. 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 At any stage. So he says he did. Well, that's completely false. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. He says that in January 93, he rang you and told you. Oh, well, uh, that's 93. I thought you were talking about back in the 70s. But across the Catholic world today, only shock and sadness at news of the Cardinal's death. His uh, dying was really unexpected. Melbourne Archbishop Peter Comensoli. For me, uh, it was very sad personal news to hear and, uh, and quite a shock. In Sydney, St Mary's Cathedral, Archbishop Anthony Fisher. He was without doubt Australia's most prominent ever churchman. Within the church, especially among bishops today, I, I heard bishops describe him as a champion of Vatican II, someone who really um, took to heart and believed the, uh, the, the, the church's message of reform and renewal. In the J.D. Of the Flynn is really editor of an American Catholic newsletter and was with Cardinal Pell in Rome last week. And someone who really, by, by the account of many cardinals and bishops, was thought of as someone who was a mentor in their life, a friend, someone who was sort of guiding them through uh, navigating kind of the um, ecclesiastical politics and, and bureaucracies of Rome. Former Prime Ministers John Howard and Tony Abbott have always been staunch supporters and friends of the Vatican's former treasurer. I liked and respected the late cardinal a lot. His passing is a great loss to the intellectual and spiritual life of our country. And from Tony Abbott. Like everyone who knew him, I feel a deep sense of loss, but I'm confident his reputation will grow and grow and that he will become an inspiration for the ages. A confidant of popes, priests and politicians, Cardinal George Pell lived for the church and its beliefs. We follow a man who died 2,000 years ago, and we say that he explained to us uh, the secrets of life, this life or the next life. Cardinal or convict George Pell was loved by millions, despised by many. <laughs>